Hello, sweet precious people of God. How are you? My sweet standards. It is Lakidra. I have come on here to encourage you guys and just share with you all the love of God and allow you to see that he sees you right where you are and that he loves you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. It doesn't matter what you are going through. Know that he's with you. He's with you in the fire and the floods and the storms and the waters. Many of you all are going to find out in the end that the trials that you've gone through in your marriage and in your home and in your life only just drew you closer to him and has allowed you to see that God is closer than a brother. That when everything else forsook you, when everyone else walked out on you, you're going to find out in the end that God was the one with you. He truly never left you. He was truly by your side. I'm telling you, you're going to see God's love and kindness through these difficult times that you all have been facing. You're going to find out through it all how much he truly loves you. That he was there by your side. That he is truly closer than a brother. I'm telling you, even though I've been through so much, you know, in my marriage and in my home and in my life, you guys, I have seen in the end that God loved me, that it is truly him that has been by my side. And so I want to come on here and encourage you guys. No matter what you've gone through, nothing shall separate us from the love of Christ Jesus. And I want to bring you his precious love and word to you all today. Some may woke up worrying, full of fear, wondering what's going to happen. You know, you may be asking, Lord, what's going to happen with my life, my marriage, my children, finances. Oh, God, what's going to happen, Lord God, even concerning a roof over my head? I feel left alone. I feel I'm, I've been abandoned. I'm telling you, the Lord wants you to know how much he loves you. He's saying, fear not, precious people of God. Neither be afraid. Don't let your heart be troubled. He overcame this world. The Lord is saying, I've overcome this world. Be of good cheer. You're going to overcome it too. He is with you, precious people of God. I'm telling you, when the Holy Spirit... When the Holy Spirit was given to us, God's precious people, God's favor is upon you. God's mercy is upon you. His love and kindness is upon you. I'm telling you, use this when we are in the troubles and in the fires and in the waters. That's when you see God's love really show up. You know, when darkness is all around us, that's when his love and light always come bursting right in. Trust him today, precious people of God. I want to share with you his word. I'm not going to be on here too long. That They are doing a lot of work around in my area. So you might hear a lot of noise in the background. So please overlook the noise. But I just want to make sure that I comfort someone today. I want to encourage someone today. Someone that is hurting. You know, I just feel the love of God. Won't, you know, that, it, that his love just wants to just pour out upon you. His love wants to surround you. His, his love wants to just, just really penetrate deep into your heart and allow you to see that God is going to bring you out. He sees the tears. He sees your weeping. He sees the spouse has left out, left out of your life. But I'm telling you, God is going to make peace. He's going to cause peace and restoration to come between you and your spouse. He's going to fix this. He's going to fix this. He's going to whisper in their hearts with his sweet, small voice saying, go back. Make this right. Make this right with your loved one. Make this right with your husband or your wife. Join up with them. Be kind to them. Well, why? Because he loves you. Because he loves you. He cares for you. Hallelujah. He is our peace. He is our Prince of Peace and our Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. You know, I love it in Luke. The Lord's Word tell us. But before I get into that, I want to also thank you all for joining with me, my first timers, and all of my new subscribers as well. Thank you all so much for your prayers, your, 
your comments and your testimonies. They are such a blessing. They are so powerful and so encouraging. I love hearing from you guys. And thank you all so much for your support, even in the work of God. May the Lord bless you in every area of your life. Hallelujah. Thank you all so much for standing with me. Hallelujah. Joining me on today or this evening or on tonight. But I want to take you all into the word of God real quickly here. The word of God tells us, remember in Luke chapter 12, verse 22, the Lord's word tells us. Then turning to his disciples, Jesus says, That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food to eat or enough clothes to wear. For life is more than food. And your body more than clothing. Look at the ravens. They don't plant or harvest or store food. In bonds for God feeds them and you are far more valuable to him than any birds can all your worries add a single moment to your life and if worry can't accomplish a little thing like that what's the use of soaring over bigger things and so the Lord is saying let's not worry Let's not worry about our life. Let's not worry about these things. The Lord is telling us our worries, it's not adding, it's not going to add not a single moment to our life. And he's saying if worry can't accomplish a little thing like that or things that we need in life, What's the use of worrying over bigger things? In other words, he's saying, I got you. I, 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 I'm concerned about you. Let me take care of, of these things in your life. I'm going to take care of them for you. The Lord is saying, I, I see what's going on in your life and in your home and in your marriage. I, I see that you need food and clothes and, and a place to live. But he's saying, cast these cares upon me. Worrying about it is not going to help. It, it'll trouble your mind and your heart and steal your peace. The Lord is saying, I, I don't want you to worry. Cast all these cares upon me. I'll be the one to take care of it. I'm going to bring healing in that home and in that life and in that marriage. I will restore all these things. The years that the locusts and the canker worms and the caterpillars has eaten. Hallelujah. Because it's his love, precious people of God. It's because he cares for you. He cares even for the birds and the flowers. He says you are more valuable than them all. Just one of you is more valuable than a whole flock of them. Look at what he says. Look at the lilies and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautiful as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for flowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? Oh my God, I thought that was so awesome for the disciples to hear our Lord Jesus say this. And I could just see, I, I could just, I, I just can't imagine how he, his expression was on his face with such love and a beautiful smile on his face letting them know you 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 are so precious to me remember he came to die for us all so i i can only imagine his, his the expression on his face meaning every word hallelujah that proceeded out of his mouth his love and kindness remember he says i've drawn you with my love and with my kindness. Oh, hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. He says, why do you have such little faith? Meaning trust in me. Have faith in me. I'm going to come through for you right on time. It doesn't matter what it looks like. I see you. You are in the palms of my hand. 
God is saying that to you, precious people of God. You are in the palms of his hand. And who he have in his hand can no devil in hell pluck out. Oh, hallelujah. Then he goes on and says, I love it. He says in verse 29, and don't be concerned about what to eat and what to drink. He says, don't even worry about that, what to eat or what to drink. Don't worry about such things. These things dominate the thoughts, he says, of unbelievers all over the world. But your father already knows your needs. Oh, I want to stop right here. He said, your father, precious people of God, already know your needs. He knows that your children, father is away and they need that loving father or that mother is away and needs and her children needs her. He sees the vows that was even made between you and your spouse and how you are standing for their salvation and standing for your family and your home to be healed. God knows about these things. He knows what you're in need of before you even ask. He wants, hallelujah, our marriages to even illustrate Christ. Think about that. Not just no any marriage, but he wants, he has a special purpose. He has a special plan even with our marriages. He's in every part of the details of our life. Hallelujah. He has designed everything according to his plan and his purpose. He, he has taken care of all of our needs for us. The Lord is saying, trust me, have faith in me. Don't worry about nothing. Hallelujah. He says, your father already know your needs. He knows about your, your needs, your, the food, the clothes that we must wear, the roof over our head. He cares even about your children. He knows how much hair we even have on our head, the Bible says. Every tear, has, every tear of ours has even been stored into a bottle. God is concerned about everything that concerns us precious people of God love him I'm telling you through these trials that I've gone through I could see God's precious hands in every area of my life even when it comes down to even my car needing the services and the repairs that they need he has been taking care of everything for me and my children you know he has truly been like a husband to me. He will be like a husband to you wives. He will be a father to you, man of God, and, 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 and the one that you need by your side, loving you as a husband loves his wife. My God, I'm telling you, it is the truth. You know, a lot of times I believe the Lord allowed things to come through and happen in our life just to show us that he's the one that takes care of us. It's not the things we have. He's the one that supplies all of our needs. He's the one that gives us the, satis the satisfaction. Hallelujah. And who is truly by our side. Not our spouse, you know, and people that we have been depending upon. It's really God at the end of the day. Who is the, the real one. Hallelujah. That loves us. Praise the Lord and that truly cares for us. Then the Lord says this here. He says, but what, what, what he wants us to do? He says, seek the kingdom of God above all else. And he will give you everything you need. Oh, hallelujah. You see, it's this relationship he wants. It's this relationship. He's asking for, he wants so bad. Seeking him, being close with him. Relying upon him, having that father and daughter relationship or that father and son relationship with him. It's been all about us coming to him. It's been all about us coming home. Hallelujah. Being one with God, having that fellowship with him, being his family, and his children. His heart longs to be with us. Yes, the Bible says he thinks about us all the times, more than all the stars in the sky. More than all the sand up on the seashore. Remember, he, he loved us so much, he sent his only begotten son. 
that who whosoever believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. See, it, it's been all about us loving Jesus and coming to his son and and being reconciled to him. That's really where God's heart is. He don't want us to focus on none of these other things. He wants to be our main focus and us to love him with all our hearts, our soul, our mind, and all our strength. He will supply all of our needs. He will take care of the rest. He says, let not our hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. It is so awesome to know that it's, it's just been about us being in love with him. That's all he wants. Nothing is more greater to God than to have his children and his people to love him and to adore him and to delight in him and to have that fellowship with him. He says, I'll take care of your needs. Every need will be taken care of. Just you love me. Just you be with me. Just seek me first. Want me more than anything. And I'll supply. I'll take care of the home. I'll take care of the rest. Place no other no others before me no other gods before me let me be your delight let me be the apple of your eyes what god our father wants so badly from us and he just to show us how much he loved us he said i know what i'll do i'll send my only son to die for them to take on their punishment i'll i'll i'm gonna show them just how much i love them hallelujah and the Bible also tells us, remember in Romans, I love it. This is so true what Paul says in Romans chapter 8, verse 31. Hallelujah. You know, I want us to look at verse 29. The Bible says, for God knew his people in advance. And he chose them to become like his son. So that his son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And having chosen them, he called them to come to him. And having called them, he gave them right standing with himself. Oh, hallelujah. This means all your sins have been taken care of. He sees us now as his children, as his dearly beloved son. And the Bible says, and having given them right standing, he gave them his glory. He gave them his life. He gave them his ways. He gave them his mind. He gave them the fullness of who he is. Oh, hallelujah. We are, remember, flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone. And that is what our marriages also speaks of and, and illustrates. Wives are, are flesh of their husband's flesh and bone of their bones. You know, God loves us so much. He wants us in his exact image and likeness. Every part of our life to be patterned after his. Now tell me that is in love. Tell me that is in love. He became a man to be like us as well. As our representative. And we are also representing him. As his spirit now dwells in us. We are ambassadors of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So if God gave us the spirit of his son, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, the Bible says. Don't he cares about everything else that concerns us? Doesn't this mean that he doesn't want to see us hurt and bow and others to hurt us and our loved ones to hurt us and our own spouse to abandon us? Doesn't that mean that he, if he loves, loves us with all his heart, he didn't even spare his own son. That he wants everything else for us. Watch, look, look at what it says. What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Oh, hallelujah. <clears throat> if God is on our side, you, you guys, and cares so much about us, who can ever come against us? No devil, no powers, no angels, no plagues, no sickness, no death, no nothing shall ever separate us from the love of Christ Jesus and the Father. If God is for us, these troubles that has come up against us doesn't mean that God doesn't love us. These things can stop us. God will supply all of our needs 
according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior but then he goes on and says and since he did not spare even his own son but gave him up for us all he gave him up precious people of God for us all won't he also give us everything else oh hallelujah who dares accuse us whom God has chosen for his own no one for God himself has given us right standing with himself oh praise the Lord who then will condemn us no one for Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us and he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand pleading for us hallelujah so God sees he's paying attention he sees everything that is concerning us hallelujah he's gonna finish what's been started in our life he's gonna finish the works what we ask him for this is why he says believe you've received it i've given it to you trust me don't worry about these things the father already knows what you're in need of just have this relationship with us is what he's saying just love us let us be your treasure let us be where your heart is all these other things will be granted. But let us be your main primary concern. Oh, praise the Lord. I'm telling you, precious people of God, God is going to come through for you. Don't worry about nothing. Remember, that's what Paul also tells us in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. He says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything and tell God what you need. And thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace. Which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds. As you live in Christ Jesus. And one final thing he says. Fix your thoughts on what is true. Honorable and right. And pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise and keep putting into practice all you've learned and received from me Paul says everything you heard from me and saw me doing then the God of peace will be with you so here we see how God wants us to think about good things lovely things don't worry about nothing come and ask him for whatever it is we need God will supply the need believe we've received it because we know that he loves us you can you can stake your life on it god i'm telling you will never leave us precious people of god remember he calls us his friends the bible said he called abraham his friend god is our friend jesus said you are my friends i've told you all these things he told the disciples because you you are not my servants he said you you are my friends wouldn't God come through for us if he laid down his life for us? Oh, yes, he certainly will. Trust him, precious people of God. God is going to give you everything you asked. Everything that's according to his will for your life. Bring it to him, your knees. Bring it to him, that request concerning that spouse. Praying on their behalf. God is pleased when we do this. This shows how much we, we love. Even when we've been forsaken, even when our spouses has, has walked out on us or our loved ones have walked out on us and for us to still be standing, that shows the love of God in our hearts. It is pleasing unto the Father to see we, are, we have not abandoned them. You know, he didn't abandon us. He forgave us of our sins and for us to still be standing because we forgave, because we still love. This is honoring and pleasing unto the Lord. And so he will absolutely grant us this request because it is his will. It is his will that we love even our enemies and pray for those, you know, despitefully use us and, and have forsaken us and have said all manner of evil things about us. And yet we still say, Lord, bless them and help them and save them. Jesus said, 
This is how the disciples are called to live. They follow him. He says, you'll know my, my disciples. You'll know them by their fruits. Hallelujah. For God has called us to be holy, holy for he is holy. And be perfect as our Father in heaven is perfect. Meaning walk in his ways. Love even our enemies. And pray for those that despitefully use us. We are storing up treasures in heaven. Hallelujah. God is going to, he's going to grant every request. He's saying, don't worry about nothing, precious people of God. He cares for you. Believe you've received what you've asked for. It is yours. And wait on it patiently to come to pass. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is coming through for you, precious people of God. I'm telling you that marriage, you're going to see it's going to be greater than it ever was. That spouse, woman of God. That husband is going to truly be in the image and the likeness of God. Truly your head as Christ is the head of the church. You're going to see the fruits of the spirit. Hallelujah. Pouring out of that husband of yours. That one you've been standing in the gap for. God is going to give you more than you could ever ask or think or hope for. Same with you, man of God, that has been standing for your wife. That has been, you know, worried about these things. God is saying, don't worry, fear not. Oh, that marriage is going to be greater than you could have ever imagined. That wife is going to truly, hallelujah, you're going to see be bone of your bone and flesh of your flesh. You're going to, you're going to see, hallelujah, that marriage restored, that home turned around because God cares for you. Trust him today. He calls us his friend. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He calls us his friend and you're going to see him closer than a brother in your life. Hallelujah. You're going to see him come through. He will never leave us nor forsake us. And so I wanted to just come on here and encourage you guys and remind you of his love. Remind you, hallelujah, of what he said about you. And now we're going to pray. Father God, we just thank you for your love and your kindness. Thank you. Hallelujah for calling us unto you and now we are your children we praise your holy name and for that one lord god that is on here that does not know you that has not come to you i pray father in the name of jesus that you will lord god begin to restore that life unto you draw them unto you father in the name of jesus cause them to know you cause them in the name of jesus to receive your precious son as their Lord and Savior. In the name of Jesus. May you pour out your grace and mercy upon them. Oh Father God. We just pray right now. Even for every marriage. Thank you Lord God. That they are covered. They are covered and are under the blood. Thank you that you are restoring homes and lives. Unto you. And families. Are being restored. We give you the praise. Hallelujah. We receive your goodness and your mercy. That shall follow us all the days of our life. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you for all of my sisters and brothers that have joined me. We trust and know that you are coming through for us. We trust and know that every need has been met. We trust and know, Lord God, hallelujah. All sin has been washed away. All of us that have come to know you, your children, we're now in right standards with you. And we know, Lord God, if you have given us all these things, the life of your son, Jesus Christ, you have given us all other things we have asked for. Thank you for removing all the worry, the fear, the doubt, the unbelief. You have given us a mind of peace that surpasses all understanding. Thank you, Lord God, for causing us to trust in you. The more we are able to know you each and every day and see your loving kindness towards us. Thank you that all fear has been cast out. Doubt and unbelief. We know that you're going to take care of every need. For you supplies every need. You supplied it through our Lord Jesus Christ. And we love and adore you and thank you for these wonderful things that you have done for us. Thank you that prodigals are coming back, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, they're coming back with a new heart and a right spirit. The same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead that dwells in us. 
Thank you, Lord God, for this precious gift of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. And for that one that is listening today that have not made the Lord your Lord and your Savior, and you have not come to the Father and received Him, I encourage you that you do on today or this evening or on tonight. Come to this fellowship that the Lord is calling you to have with him. For he loves you. He wants to bring healing to your life and meet every need. And for you to seek him first in his kingdom and righteousness. And all things will be added unto you. So I encourage you to do that on today. Remember God loves you. Hallelujah. And precious people of God, remember God loves you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He loves you and I love you too. Hallelujah. Trust him on today. Trust him right wherever you are. And until next time, I love you guys. Bye-bye.